Well, it's okay. What inspired you to write The Sun, the Moon, the Stars, and Maya? That's a, this is a good story. I like this story. Um, it's my story. <clears throat> uh, basically, uh, I had, uh, once I left corporate America, which was in 2008, um, I decided that uh, I would try a, uh, my hand at a, a retail business online. My sister and brother-in-law own a bead store that beads and crystals. <clears throat> it's called Beads, Crystals, and More, actually. It's out in Encinitas, and they do very well. And they had talked about putting it online to see if they could, you know, expand their business to a worldwide business. And um, so we decided to, uh, to, to enter a partnership and try to do that. And we did. <clears throat> um, and I did all of the online stuff, you know, here in Connecticut. They had all the inventory and the other things in, in California. And we were moderately successful. We weren't getting to the goals that we wanted to be. Uh, but one of the things that I decided to do was uh, start a blog <clears throat> to support the business and drive traffic to the online uh, group. And during the blog, I wanted to explore the spiritual side of our customers. Beads have an ancient history. Crystals and stones are, you don't get much more spiritual than that. And so, <clears throat> um, what I would do is I would every day just on the blog write a, um, a, a, a find a quote. I would wake up with a with a thought. I would find a quote that kind of reflected the thought that I was uh, trying to expand, and then I would write a short lyrical poem uh, that you know spoke to my interpretation of that quote. And then I would go and find you know online all these photographs that would kind of tell a story uh, and 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 illustrate it. And I'd put it up on the blog, I'd put it up on my Facebook page, and, and, and it would drive traffic to the, and I would get quite a bit of an, an audience there and a lot of very positive comments, especially on Facebook, where uh, people were telling me they were, they were actually getting healing experiences from some of the, the readings that they were doing. And that the timeliness of, you know, the, the subject matter that I was putting up and their need to hear it was a perfect match. And it was actually helping them. Well, uh, that went on for... Uh, you know, until we closed the business down, which was the summer of 2011. Um, <clears throat> and a year before that, my daughter, um, who comes from my, my uh, third marriage, uh, she was, uh, so I, I inherited an adult daughter, but she's my daughter. And um, she surprised me and probably honored me with something that I, I would never have imagined would have happened. And she asked if I would perform her upcoming wedding. I'm not a justice of the peace. I'm not a you know lawyer. I'm not a, and Connecticut has some pretty uh, draconian uh, you know requirements that you can't get an internet uh, you know universal life uh, ministry and perform weddings legally here. But uh, I decided to go ahead and and get um, a justice of the peace thing, and I was able to find somebody friendly to do that, and I did do that. Well. Sammy, our, our, uh, uh, just before that, in, uh, in April of uh, 2011, uh, Sammy, our long-lived uh, uh, Shih Tzu puppy, who my wife had introduced me to, died. I was providing hospice care for him. And when he died, I was uh, pretty, pretty upset. Uh, so I moped around the house for about three months, uh, two months, and uh, my wife was tired of seeing that, and she decided it was time for an addition to the family. And uh, locally, there was a family that breeded Shih Tzus that um, you know, we were able to go and find, and Maya found us, and, and now Maya was part of our family. And every day I would take her for a walk, and we have a nice long driveway, and, and I'm a little bit like Tevia uh, from The Fiddler on the Roof. What I do is, uh, you know, every day I'm always, to, not every day, every minute, I'm talking to spirit, I'm talking to God, uh, I'm sharing a joke, I'm, I'm, I'm saying a prayer, I'm, uh, you know, telling a story, and I'm always asking the same questions, you know, what, <clears throat> what should I be doing, why am I here, how can I help? And I've never heard anything. <laughs> it's never, you know, the same thing in sweat lodges. I'd be in the sweat lodges and everybody would be seeing, you know, lights and I never saw anything. It didn't change my belief system. I still believed in all of the things that were going on. I just never saw that. Uh, and I never saw or heard anything answered. And I wanted to hear James Earl Jones come down in a booming voice saying, oh, Rich, just do this. And that would be my answer, and I would be happy and go off and do that. I was walking Maya this one day in a very hot July. It was actually two years ago, pretty close to today. And uh, I was thinking about what I wanted to say during the upcoming wedding ceremony and um, 
I said, okay, I'm, I started talking to God, which is what I always do. And I asked the same questions. You know, what, a, <clears throat> what is it that I should be doing? Well, why am I here? And you know, what, <clears throat> well, how can I help? I heard something, I heard a whisper. And I don't know if it was coming from inside my head. I'm not trying to explain it away. I don't really care about the logic of what it was. It, it gave me a spirit chill. And when I get a spirit chill, I know something's happening that I can't understand and don't really care to, uh, but I should pay attention. And what I heard inside my head was a soft whisper that said, do what you're doing. And by then we had already closed, uh, we're ready to close the business. Do what you're doing, um, only do it for uh, uh, parents and children to close in their relationships, use Maya as a muse and do it in a simple language. I was taken aback, I almost fell over, um, but I understood that there was something that I needed to pursue. <clears throat> and so um, that then began a course, and there were some other things that happened synchronistically. Um, I had written for my wife's birthday a haiku, and it was, it was right around the same time, a haiku that um, I illustrated with uh, she loves the wolf, and a wolf is, I'm sorry, uh, the fox, the fox is her totem. And I did a little illustration of the fox with it and put it in a nice frame and gave it to her. And, and she immediately looked at it. She goes, you should be illustrating children's books. And I said, <laughs> it never even occurred to me to do that. Um, then during the wedding, which happened about a month later, as we were sitting at the table, uh, one of the kids comes over. I've never met this kid before in my life, uh, but he was uh, the, the son of the, um, the, the groom's brother and it was the first time I'd ever met him. He was probably five or six years old. And he brings this book called uh, Thomas the Choo Choo. And he says, read this to me. He said, okay. And so I started reading the book to him. And I'm reading the book and I'm going, this is terrible. <laughs> it's not a very good book at all. It's very commercially um, uh, successful, as I found out later, but it was no, there was no real story there. There was no real goodness that was coming from it. Um, but I read it and he was fascinated and I could see that he was fascinated. And what I understood later was that those two things were confirming, you know, spirit has a way of moving. And uh, I, again, I don't explain it away, but all of a sudden synchronistically things were happening where a children's book was starting to emerge as something that was a direction that I was being pushed towards. Um, and it's not exactly a children's book, what I've written, as, uh, as you may or may not have uh, come to a conclusion about. But at the same time, that was my intent, was to help children to awaken. Uh, there's a lot of indigo children out there, a lot of people that, um, you know, that, that, that have a lot of uh, spirituality that, you know, has not yet been awakened. I was one of them. I don't want the children to wait till they're 61 years old before they discover that they have a spiritual side that's important and that they can pursue. And what would have happened if I had discovered that 20 when I was 20 or when I was six? I, I can't answer the question. I'm happy with the way my life went. I'm not complaining about it. But what would have happened is a question that came up in my mind. And that was the intent and the desire and the, and the need to do this. So I started shifting without without any real effort on my part, all of a sudden, all of the poetry that I would write became simple language. I wasn't using big words. They, you know, I was using words that a child could understand. Uh, they were big concepts, very big concepts, but, and they were somewhat deep. And I surprised, that was surprised by what was going on. And so when we did close the business, <clears throat> I decided to start a blog and that was uh, uh, separate from what we were doing here. Uh, and I called it Maya the Puppy Poet and uh, started to uh, illustrate Maya. Uh, and what I did was did it started doing it in pastels. And then I graduated to digital, which made it a lot easier to you know, do something quickly <clears throat> and clean up the breeze. And uh, before I knew it, and this was in October of uh, 2012, um, I hadn't decided to do the book yet. But I did pursue, you know, uh, this this avenue, and around uh, January time frame, you know, a couple of months later, I saw that it was it was taking off, that people were really getting getting something from it, and I was contributing, and I said, you know, I better go full in, and so I decided to just jump straight in, 
you know, and I don't have the savings in the, uh, enough savings in the world, and I've been without an income coming for about five years, and so savings doesn't last forever in that in that regard. Um, but I decided that I wasn't going to let fear rule me, and I was just going to continue to do what it is that I had been doing. Uh, I have a poem in there called "Faithfulness of Routine," um, <clears throat> and and basically that's what I was doing. I'm going to continue doing what I was doing. There's two ways to look at it. One is keep doing what you're doing and expect a different result as insanity, or keep doing what you're doing, only do it with a different intent. Um, and that's the definition of spirituality. And so I, I uh, started to um, uh, progress towards the book right around that time, which was not very long ago, about six, seven months ago. And then I put the good book together quickly because I have several hundred of these poems that had to be edited obviously and I had to illustrate them but that happened very quickly once I made that decision and the book just published uh, last month. 